In this video, we're going to see some of the basic troubleshooting, which is relating to routing. So we'll start with how to troubleshoot your routing process here. So whatever the type of routing we are using. So here I'm not specifically discussing any type of routing here. So the routing means it can be your static routing or it can be your default routing. It can be RIP, EHRP or it can be your OSP of routings. So any type of routing, there are some few basic things we need to keep in mind when we verify our routing configuration. So anyway, we'll get into some individual routing process like RIP troubleshooting, EHRP, OSP of troubleshooting in our separate videos. Here I'm just discussing some of the basic routing process. So the first thing always you need to understand the basic routing process. So you should have a very good understanding on how the routing process happens like if you remember in my basic videos, basic routing videos, I already have a separate video discussed over there about explaining how the routing process happens. I'm not getting into that again, but just quickly, I will explain you that if this device connecting on the LAN want to communicate with another device in a separate LAN, the first thing it should, it should be defined as a gateway. So the packet goes to the router and the router is going to check the routing table, verify the next hop. If the next hop address is correct, then it will forward the packet to router 2 and the router 2 is going to check the routing table and then forward the packet to the LAN interface. So we already verified in detail how the routing process happens. So you should have a very good understanding of that routing process and then verifying your routing table by using show IP route commands. And finally, if there is a misconfiguration of any routing configurations, you should verify it by using a show running configurations. And finally, we need to do any changes required as per our requirement. So let's get started here. So I'm going to use one simple scenario here where, where we are going to take some fire routers, multiple routers, and we'll take some simple example and we'll try to understand how the routing process happens here. So let's take an example. There is a device with 192.168.1.1 connecting on the router one LAN is not able to access 192.168.5.1 which is on the router file LAN. So now when, when these two devices are not communicating, so there can be, the problem can be anywhere. Now the first thing of troubleshooting is to figure out where the problem is. Okay, that is something because you know, we cannot uh, really get into each and every device and verify the configurations. The problem might be in your gateway. It might be the connecting between the router one and router two, or it can be on the router one configurations, or it can be router two configurations. It can be router three, router four, router five, or it can be the problem with the connectivity, or it might be a problem with the device in the LAN. So now tracing the problem where exactly it is, is the main task of troubleshooting. So now how to do that? So the first thing, always make sure that uh, whenever you are starting troubleshooting first step, I really recommend to make sure that divide your network into two parts, probably maybe two parts. I can say <coughs> so here I'm dividing my network into two multiple parts. Like first make sure that from router three, you are able to access this user or not. So in case if you are able to access from router three, you are able to access this user in that case there's no problem on the right side so which means we really uh, no need to check much on the right side because mostly if router 3 is able to access the 5.1 user which means all your routing from router 3 to 4 4 to 5 and 5 to LAN is perfect so in case if they are not able to access then you can start troubleshooting on this side so maybe this side is perfect or maybe the problem on both the sides so we need to check out and assuming that this part is perfect from router 3 to Router 5, everything is working fine. So there's no problem here. So now you can try uh, trying to access from router 2. If router 2 is also able to access, then there is no problem from router 2 to router 5. So most likely the problem might be in your connect connectivity between router 1 to router 2, or it might be in your LAN resources. So the first thing, tracing the problem where exactly, in between which two routers. So it can be between router 1 and 2, or 2 and 3 or three and four and five and five is the main thing. So let's take an example. Router three is able to access, from router three, I'm able to access the five dot network, but from router two, I'm not able to access that. So which means there may be problem on the router two configurations, routing configurations, 
or there might be a problem on the WAN interface which is connecting between or it can be problem on any other any other things so we need to figure out that and then we need to figure out what are the possible reasons for the for this maybe the misconfigurations find out and fix it okay so that's the first thing we need to do so router 2 assuming that router 2 and router 3 is having the problem so now whenever you realize that there is a problem within router 2 and router 3 router 3 is able to access 5.1 but from router 2 i'm not able to access to that network which means the problem is on the router 3 the first thing i'll suggest you to check the connectivity between router 2 and router 3 because sometimes what happens we have a very basic problems like connectivity issues and we spend unnecessarily troubleshooting your routing configuration so routing configurations anyway we need to verify but it has to be done only after connectivity which i really suggest you so make sure that your physical connections are up the link connecting between router 2 and 3 whichever the two devices you realize a problem and then we need to get into our routing configurations where i'm going to verify my routing table and make sure that whatever the destination network that destination network is in my routing table or not so if that entry is present in your routing table and make sure that in your routing table the entry is present with a valid next hop sometimes what happens you have an entry in the routing table but the next hop is wrong or it might be a misconfigurations which can really affect your routing routing communicate the communication exchange the route exchange between these two routers so i really suggest you to check the routing configurations if you're using static or default routings maybe you are giving a wrong next stop if you're using any other protocols then ospf ehr related troubleshooting we have discussed much more in detail so it, it varies depending upon the type of the routing but the major thing is you have to make sure that the route is present in the routing table if there is no route in the routing table there is no point in communication so you have to make sure that your route must be present in the routing table so once you make uh, router 2 is able to access so maybe the connectivity issue here so once we fix it the next thing we need to do is we need to make sure that router 2 should be able to access your five dot network and then finally from router 1 you should be able to access and then finally you should be able to access so you have to make sure that the router one must be able to access so finally uh, make sure that your gateway if, if from router one i can see the routing table entry but from the lan i'm not able to access make sure that you have a connectivity between your lan users and a gateway so these are some of the things which we need to keep in mind when we do troubleshooting so i really suggest you to check out these things but depending upon the type of the protocols or type of the routing we're using, the steps will vary. But the overall troubleshooting, your routing concepts, this is how we can minimize the number of configuration verifications. And also we can minimize by going to each and every router and verifying it. I got a simple scenario here. I got the same three routers where I'm using 192.168.1.100 in my router one LAN 192.168.2.100 and 192.168.3.100 here. I already inserted some of the issues in my routers here. Manually I made some errors and what I want, I'm going to do is I'm going to verify, make sure that my PC 1.1 must be able to access the 3.1 user. So that is what my requirement. So I need to make sure that my 1.1 user somewhere here is trying to access your 1.3 user somewhere on the third LAN. But as per my requirement, they are not able to communicate. That is my, uh, what exactly it is happening. If they are not able to communicate. I want to make sure that these two devices must be able to communicate. So the problem can be anywhere. So I'm going to, I'm going with my step-by-step -step process to figure out and verify where the problem is. So I'll start with my router one. The first thing what I'll do is router one. If you if you really ensure so now depending upon your requirement, you can check by pinging to the gateway and making sure that finding out the problem only this particular user is facing the problem or all the users are facing the problem. Sometimes what happens only this user is not able to access this network, whereas the remaining users they still can access this. So if you if you realize something like this then the problem is not with your routing configurations the problem is not with your gateway and the problem is not with your switch the problem might be with your local device so these are some of the basic testings again we need to do before we 
we directly jump to our routing configuration so every time there won't be a routing problem so but here we focus on routing majorly but every time it might be not be a routing problem so if all the users in the lan are not able to access the destination that is 192.168.3.1 in that case i can really ensure that there might be a problem with my centralized device switch or it might be a problem with my router or routing configurations so in my case as we are doing troubleshooting so there is no problem here i verified it so the route not only this pc all the users are not able to access so if you want you can try and check i'm going to my pc where i have an ip address i'm going to verify by pinging to my gateway first making sure that you should be able to access your gateway so you can see from my 1.1 pc i'm not able to access my gateway which means there is some problem between this part okay so let me try to check the second pc which is my 192.168.1.2 192.168.1.100 sorry it is 192.168.1.100 so you can see i'm not able to ping to 1.100 from the second pc also so most likely the problem is not the connectivity between these devices it might be the problem here so what i'll do is i'll try to go and verify my router configurations so as per my interface which is connecting f0 by 0 on this side F0 by 0 must be an IP address. So maybe by mistake I remember. So this is the problem here. You can see the F0 by 0 interface which I am connecting to my LAN is not having any IP address. So maybe due to some misconfiguration, sometimes the IP address might be removed. So I'm going to make sure that the IP address is correct. 255.255.255.0 and no shutdown command. And now if I verify my device, it is having the IP address 192.168.1.100. Now I'll try to ping to my LAN users, that is 192.168.1.1 PC. You can see I'm getting a reply, similar way I should be able to ping to 1.2 also. Similar way 1.3, 1.4. So make sure that your LAN users are able to access your gateway. So because that is the first thing we need to check connectivity part make sure that there is no problem in the connectivity between the lan and then once we verify this you are able to access the gateway the second thing we need to verify in your pc that device sometimes misconfiguration of ip address sometimes the gateway address may not be given or the gateway address might be wrong given so that is something we also need to verify make sure that the device which are not able to access they have a proper gateway configured so once we verify this part, we can confirm that this particular LAN part is perfect. So, but the packet is going till router. If I try to access my other network resources, that is 192.168.3.1, which is, which is somewhere on the router 3 LAN, you can see the packet is going till router 2, that is 10.002, but after that it is not going, which means now as per our scenario here, the packet from starting from 1.1 is going to router 1 and router 1 is sending the packet to router 2 and after that it is dropping the packet here which means it's not going after that so most likely the problem is here because on the router 1 the routing configurations are perfect that's the reason the packet is still going till router 2 so we need to check the router 1 configuration if you want you can check i can check but as per my output i can easily say that the packet is going till router 2 if you want to verify if any packet come for 3 dot network it should be sent to 10.002 you can see here any packet come for 3 dot network it should be sent to 10.002 which means this configuration is correct this is also correct so all the configurations are correct here so the problem might be on the router 2 routing configurations or maybe something misconfigured the packet is not going after router 2 so let's go to router 2 and verify our routing configuration so i'm on my router 2 here on the router 2 i'm going to say show ip route command and you can see there is no entry for 192.168.3. network because you know if you remember the routing process here by default the packet goes to router 1 router 1 sends to router 2 router 2 it checks the routing table for 192.168.3. network 
and if there is no entry for the routing table it is going to simply drop the packet that is what happening here on the router 2 router 2 do not have entry for 192.168.3. network so if i verify so maybe you can confirm that maybe you can think i did the configurations if you really know you did that but it's not coming in my routing table means sometimes what happens you write a route and if you write a wrong next stop you can see here in my example the next stop address is 11.002 but it is written as 15.002 so wrong next stop address also can affect your things so here the next stop address is wrong so what i can do is i can remove that configuration always add no before that and then I'm going to say IP route 192.168.3.network 255.255.255.0 and then the next stop address is 11.002 so now if I verify my routing table after adding a proper entry still I'm not getting the route and if you try to see here there's one more uh, thing to watch here router 2 is having how many kind of interfaces this is my kind of interface which is on S0 by 0 11 dot network is on s0 by 1 and f0 by 0 that is these three interfaces i got three interfaces which are connecting to my network but here you can see there are only two c's so i can see s0 by 0 i can see f0 by 0 but i cannot see s0 by 1 the switch interface is not listed whenever you see the interface is not listed in the routing table you can you always need to check this interface is in down state it can be administrative down or it can be down down or it can be up and down whatever the reason so we did the troubleshooting the connectivity already so i'm not getting into that part whenever you see your three kind of interfaces are not listed in your routing table you need to understand that your interface is down you can see here a 1 interface is in down state now if i verify what is the reason for that show ip interface brief if you want to verify if you see down down there are most likely the reasons might be the remote device powered off maybe the remote device powered off here or it can be this port is in shutdown state let me check on the router 3 so i'm going to check on the router 3 show ip interface brief you can see i'm connecting a 0 by 0 and it is administratively down so this is a reason for it so i'm going to s0 by 0 and then i'm going to give no shutdown command okay so already i did this troubleshooting in my separate video so i'm not getting into this connectivity troubleshooting here so now you can see the router is link is up and if i go to my router 2 again show ip route now i can see the route entry in my routing table as well as with the correct next stop address so once we fix it let us go to my router pc1 and the last time when i was trying to ping to 3.1 i was not able to ping now i'm going to try again now i should see the reply should come if it is not coming then i have something more to troubleshoot so you can see i'm able to communicate between 3.1 if you try trace commands tracer you can see how the packet travels even sometimes if you see the entry in the routing table but if you are not able to ping then tracer will really help you useful command very useful command so sometimes what happens you will see all the routing configurations are perfect there might be some acl which is denying the traffic so there is something also you need to check out whenever you are doing troubleshooting your routing concepts so this way we can troubleshoot any type of routing i use static routing here just to uh, use static routing it might be your default routing as well so I'll use one simple example for default routing as well. So let's take an example. I have a simple network. I got a router LAN which is connecting to my different branch offices. And also it is connecting to my ISP from where I'm able to access internet. From where I'm able to access internet. So my users in my LAN complains. A user in my LAN complains that he's not able to access internet. So now there are many things we need to keep in mind whenever this user says I'm not able to access internet. First thing you have to make sure that you should be able to access the gateway. So make sure that your LAN user and the gateway are connecting or communicating with each other by using a simple ping command. And then we need to go to router 1 and verify the routing table. Because in order to access your internet routes, 
you should have a default route pointing towards isp with a common next with the next stop address whatever or you can use exit interface also so the default route must be configured correctly okay if there's no default routing or if this interface goes down automatically your default route will be removed in that case they will not be able to access so if you realize that all the users are not able to access then there may there is a problem with your centralized device it might be your switch or it can be a router or it might be a problem with isp but if only that specific user complains that he's not able to access whereas everyone can access so you it is a waste of time again checking the routing configuration because if there is a problem with the router routing or isp then no one should have been able to access so check your configurations on your pc check his connectivity to the lan and check his settings sometimes your wrong ip addresses or he's not able he's not using the right dna default gateway address or dns address all these things so always check those things but the routing part again it's the same thing make sure that you should have a default route pointing towards isp so these are some of the basic things we need to keep in mind when we do troubleshooting your routing concepts so in our next videos we'll be discussing more in detail about how to troubleshoot your eagrp and we also see how to troubleshoot your ospo protocols which are much more common dynamic routing protocols in the production networks so thanks for watching